Dear students, due to COVID-19 pandemic, we are at home. I think online class will be useful to you. Today, let me start the topic, Negotiable Instruments Act, 1881. And this act came into force with effect from 1st March 1882. So come to the importance of this act or the background of this act. Why then Government of India introduced this act? This normally this act governs the business transactions, mainly biz credit business transactions. So question is before this act, there were some credit transactions in India? There were some credit transactions that were huge amount. How these credit transactions were governed? How these credit transactions were governed? The importance of act comes here. These credit transactions, that means business credit transactions before this act, were governed by Hundis. So what is Hundi? So Hundi is nothing but a traditional bill of exchange. I repeat the word traditional. Hundi is nothing but traditional bill of exchange retained in a vernacular language. Vernacular language means Hindi, Bengali, Assamese like this, not in English. So the problem was there was no written rule. Thousands of transactions with huge amount were transacted with the Hundis, but there was no written rule. So to solve this problem, that is the problem actually, lack of rule, it creates many problems. And to solve this problem, government of India, then government of India introduced this act. Now come to the, what are the negotiable instruments? We can categorize in two groups, negotiable instrument as per act, act means negotiable instrument of 1881 and as per custom and use. So for today, we will discuss this part as per act and for this part we need another class so as per act there are three types of negotiable instruments promissory note bill of exchange and sec section 4 5 and 6 respectively and as per custom or and use Hundis is here again, share warrant, dividend warrant, bearer debenture, treasury bill, etc. According to the Act, negotiable instrument means promissory note, bill of exchange and sec. So after this, you have to know that what are the characteristics of negotiable instruments. Let's come to the main characteristics of negotiable instruments. These three are the main characteristics. There are so many characteristics of negotiable instruments you will get. Suppose a negotiable instrument is a written document. There must be a date and negotiable instruments are unconditional so many characteristics you will get. But these are main and basic. 
So the first characteristic is transferability. So negotiable instruments are transferable. But there are, there are some rules of transferability. If, if the instrument is a bearer instrument, then mere delivery will constitute the transfer. Just to deliver it to somebody else, then he will be the owner of the instrument. If it is bearer instrument. Or if it is ordered instrument, if it is ordered instrument, to transfer an ordered instrument, it needs endorsement. So again, what is endorsement? For endorsement, we have to discuss in separate class. But the point is, the negotiable instruments are transferable. If it is bearer instrument, mere delivery will constitute the transfer. And if it is ordered instrument, then endorsement and delivery both are necessary. So that will be discussed in separate class. Then come to the negotiable instrument, negotiability, which is very, very important characteristics of negotiable instrument. You see here also negotiable. So it is negotiability. So what is negotiability? Most of the students confused this transferability and negotiability. That means what is the difference between transferability and negotiability? So it is important. So transferability means what? Transferability means it involves two parties. One is transferor and another is transferring. Transferor and transferring. Two parties are involved as yes, because negotiable instruments are transferable. So negotiability means that transferring, that means who received the instrument, he will enjoy the better title than the transferor. That means if there is any defect in the previous parties or uh, even the transferor, their defects cannot touch the transferee. In other words, the defects of transferor cannot touch the transferee. The when there are some conditions, there are some conditions which are to be fulfilled by transferee, then only he can enjoy the better title than the transferor. So what are those conditions? What conditions to be fulfilled by a transferee to enjoy the better title than the transferor? Number one, he must receive the instrument for value. He must receive the instrument for value. Suppose somebody has received a gift set. Gift set is also a set, but there is no consideration. He has received the set free, free of cost, not for value. In that case, he will not enjoy the better title than the transferor. He must receive the set for value. Then only he is entitled to enjoy the better title than the transfer. Next, number two. Condition number two. Condition number two. He must receive the instrument for help uh, on good faith. On good faith. That means the transferee does not know. Honestly, honestly, transferee does not know that there is or there were any defect in the part of transferor. He honestly he has received the instrument. 
or there is no clue also. He has received the instrument on good faith. So this is second condition. And the third condition is he must receive the instrument within maturity. Within maturity. He must receive the instrument within maturity. Normally, a sake is valid for three months. Previously, it was six months. Now, as per Reserve Bank guideline, it is three months. He has to receive the instrument within the maturity. So, if a transferee or he may be regarded as pay also, satisfies this three condition, he will be regarded as holder in due course. Holder in due course. Technically speaking, a holder in due course can enjoy better title than the transferor. And this is called negotiability. I repeat, Negotiability means a holder in due course can enjoy better title than the transferor. So who is a holder in due course? Who satisfies these three conditions? He will be regarded as holder in due course. As a whole, these characteristics, this is this uncommon characteristics, I, I should say is known as or is called negotiability. I think the difference between transferability and negotiability is clear. Now come to the third point. Right to sue. It means the pay or the owner of the instrument if he is deprived of by any party who is involved in the instrument, the pay, the owner can file a suit or case against that party due to whom he has been deprived of. That means the pay, the owner of the instrument can file a case against the parties who is responsible for any defects. So this is called right to sue. Normally these cases are finalized by the court under special provisions and as quick as possible. So these are the main characteristics of negotiable instruments. Thank you. See you in the next class.